Hello everyone, and a warm welcome to all of you in today's panel discussion. Our topic for today is open core to open source, building a business model. My name is Gandhali Samant, and I lead the developer ecosystem and market engagement charter at GitHub. As you all know, open source is everywhere. There is hardly any industry where open source adoption or penetration hasn't happened yet. According to a survey conducted in 2017, 99% of organizations use open source in some format. And then there are organizations who have gone ahead and built their entire business model around open source. In today's panel discussions, we are going to talk to founders or co-founders or for such organizations who have built thriving businesses around open source. So without further ado, let's get introduced to our panel today. We will start with Neha Gupta, who is the co-founder of Kepli, an open source API testing platform. She has been in product development for around seven years. She has also contributed to open source projects like XWiki, JenkinX, etc. And she loves to mentor students in different programs such as Google Summer of Code, GCI, and Outreach. Welcome, Neha. Thank you. Thanks for having me. We are very happy to have you here. Next, we have Pranav Raj Tripuran, who is the co-founder and CEO of Chatwood. He's a FOSS enthusiast, and he's passionate about building developer communities. Welcome, Pranav. Hey, thanks. Thanks for having me here. Uh, excited to, uh, to be here. Thanks. Our third panelist for the day is Harini Jankira. Harini is the co-founder and CEO of Roi.io, a low-code platform to build your product backend in minutes, all in the browser. Prior to this, Harini was a VP of engineering at BlackRock and also a partner at an early stage VC. She is an advocate of open source software as well as women in tech. She holds a master's degree in computer engineering from University of Texas at Austin. Welcome, Harini. Thanks for having me. Great to be here. And our fourth panelist is Rushab Mehta, founder of Frappe and ERP Next. His passion is to revolutionize business software by building a high quality, free, and open source ERP. ERP Next is a fully featured platform and can be used by teams in many different domains. Rushab likes to be personally involved in all the activities right from software development to team building and does many different roles at his organization. Welcome, Rishab. Thanks, thanks, Gandhali. Great to be here. Okay, so as our topic suggests today, we are going to talk about open source to open core building business model. So my first question is to you, Neha. How do you differentiate between open source and open core? Okay, uh, hey, you know, uh, since uh, open source is now very uh, ubiquitous and wi widely adopted, so everyone is pretty aware that it's really available software, right? But I want to specify licensing that a true open source um, license or a platform uh, is something that is allowing its users or or want to use, edit, or even redistribute or sell um, to, to their heart's desire. <laughs> and when, when it comes to open core, uh, on the other hand, it's, it's more like to me, it's a business model to monetize the open source software. So, you know, the idea is simple that build an open source product, uh, but offer an additional premium functionality uh, which is under a commercial license that you know restricts the modification and uh, redistribution of that. So uh, that's according to me is a core difference in open source and open core. Thanks, Harini. Pranav, would you like to add anything to it? Um, yeah, uh, I think uh, so. To me, uh, like you know, there is always a community as well as like you know a business for. Uh, and open source uh, based businesses, right? Like, for example, like, you know, uh, as if you take an example of Chatwood, we have uh, a larger community who actually uses our open source uh, product, uh, which is 
which has like you know most of the features but like you know uh, it doesn't have uh, a set of features which might not be relevant for uh, a smaller smaller users or smaller businesses so i think uh, the community like uh, to build the community we need manpower we need uh, 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 we need the capital we need uh, more and more uh, people to in get involved so what i feel is like uh, so as a, as a distinction uh, and as a, a difference between uh, open source and open core uh, what what i see is like you know to build the larger community we need uh, some way to capitalize uh, the existing product and so there like you know we have some features which will be restricted uh, under a certain license so uh, like you know at chatwood what we are building is like you know we have open source uh, product which is in a mighty license and there is a set of features which is under enterprise license which has uh, like you know which needs a license to uh, you know use so yeah i think like you know like for me the difference is like you know open core actually like you know helps to build uh, open source communities Thanks, Pranav and Neha. I think uh, I think it gave us good clarity about uh, how to differentiate between open source and open core. Uh, my next question is for you, Rishabh. Uh, how do you build an open core business model? What is the thought process behind it? Um, so, uh, you know, we actually are uh, fully open source. We are not in the open core uh, side of things. And, um, uh, you know, we decided that uh, so, so open core and open source, uh, you know, like Pranav said that there is a lot of good reason, right? I mean, you have to sustain your business at some level and open core is a great way to identify features. I come from a slightly different perspective that, uh, you know, I mean, there is like, where do you draw the line ultimately, right? I mean, that, that is a very difficult question that people need to ask that uh, ultimately, if, if you're going to ask your users to, uh, if, if, you, if you're going to position your product as an open source product, you know, users do expect that uh, you know your product is uh, you know really free and open source right and for us you know we really monetize from hosting and uh, services you know that's our model so we we kind of come from the uh, you know maybe the outlier in this group here so yeah well outliers is good because you told us about how your open source business model works harini would you like to add is your model open source or open core yeah, I can talk about our approach to open core or what we like to call commercial open source model as well. That's kind of prevalent right now. Uh, so we have a base open source model that's completely free. Uh, the code base, uh, you can self-host or you can. we also have a hosted version that's also free. And we have a paid model that we're actually still launching soon that gives you access to pro features that in addition to the base open source version gives you uh, things that are dependent on more infrastructure or things that need you to maintain things that typically uh, a one person or a team using the open source model might not need. So logically, it makes sense that those kind of features go into the hosted uh, pro paid feature. So that's how we are approaching the open core business model. Thanks, Harini. So as we see, there is this trend today, right? It's growing to be an open source or open core based organization. So uh, my question is for you, Pranav. Why did you decide to be an open core based organization? Um, so yeah, I think like, you know, before coming to that, I, I would like to uh, answer like, you know, why it is open source. Uh, so uh, like there is, uh, like if you look at the uh, regulations right now, right, like in the GDPR or CPR or any data regulation which is coming up in the world, uh, companies are moving towards uh, having uh, uh, like, you know, their own infrastructure, like, you know, the managed infrastructure uh, for their customers so that they don't uh, transfer data to third party, right? So at that point, uh, it makes sense uh, to have a self-hosted, uh, you know, kind of a software. And open source actually like you know helps us to do that uh, in a pretty good way. And uh, like when when we actually like you know thought about making it open source and building a business out of it, there were a couple of options for us. One was uh, you know we completely open source it and then build a cloud version of the software just like uh, you know uh, Rushab is doing, uh, or uh, we could actually like you know uh, build the entire thing uh, as open source and use uh, support uh, subscriptions from that 
and the third thing was uh, which was proven and like you know which has uh, a lot of potential was that like you know you have a base model where uh, which is used by a larger community and you have a set of features which is restricted uh, to a set like to like which will be used by uh, either larger companies or like you know uh, people who 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 wanted customized features so we we figured that building larger businesses requires this kind of approach uh, and hence uh, we actually like you know went into being an open core company uh, rather than uh, like you know adopting other models thanks prana uh, rushab would you like to tell us why did you decide to be an open core open source based organization um so we we started way back right i mean we started in 2008 when uh, there was very little awareness of open source uh, business models and 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 the prevalent thinking in 2008 2009 i mean 10 years ago was that only red hat makes money from open source right uh, nobody else does i mean today we are in a very different market very different scenario where you have a whole bunch of uh, open source companies commercial open source companies that have come out and i mean it's essentially due to the rise of the cloud i mean once once the cloud became the de facto deployment model for software uh, you know the whole movement uh, to distribute software on the cloud became open source and developers started taking more decisions and you know the best way to get to a developer is through an open source so it's it's just a very new thing that we have seen uh, you know obviously you know the uh, mongodb going public and you know the acquisition of github by microsoft right these were very very important events for the whole ecosystem to shift to a pro open source model i mean this wasn't there 10 years ago right 10 years ago nobody would touch open source uh, we have seen like a whole tectonic shift in this uh, business i mean we come from a tra- more traditional mindset uh, i mean i you know my business model was essentially what wordpress was that uh, you know we we will provide the software for free but we will provide hosting uh, currently we don't distinguish between the software and it does give us some disadvantage but i think in the long run uh, we do believe that there is there will be enough uh, proprietary or there will be enough uh, uh, you know services commercial services that we will be able to build around hosting and around you know building a network and around the delivering services that you know we will be able to sustain even without going open core uh, we have stuck to it i mean our license has been G- gnu gpl v3 from uh, the get go and i don't and we don't intend to change it now uh, if i were to start today maybe i don't know see so all of us know that uh, i would say the success of open source projects are dependent on uh, is dependent on the number of people are contributing it or using it right so adoption is the key here uh, so my question is to you harini how do you drive adoption of your platform yeah so we focus on a couple of things to drive adoption first through awareness where we are you know trying to talk about what the project does and uh, how it can help other people build their products easily through you know various things like content videos and easy to use templates that people can really fork and get started and then we have like significant emphasis on growing the community via contributions and conversations and also integrations with other tools in the platform uh, that we can uh, you know collaborate with so it's not like a we are building in isolation we are collaborating with other open source project creators and the community um we are also working on engagement at a community level by you know jo- you know being proactive and uh, addressing various issues prs and like discord messages because i think um, at a core level open source is basically a community so engaging with the community keeping it thriving is one of our core goals as well thanks harini uh, neha would you like to add your thoughts to it how do you guys drive adoption at kiploid Yeah I mean uh, we are still very early stage so I don't have much to add but uh, we've been getting a lot of traction from uh, you know social channels like discussing on uh, subreddit uh, or of go community developer communities and uh, uh, these are helping us with you know getting a lot of feedback uh, and and you know spreading the word throughout the community people talking about kiploy in uh different blog posts and podcast uh that is a major uh channel and also since you know uh kiploy is a uh, uh, an api testing platform which captures captures data in a very intensive manner so 
uh, to be 100% open source and that adoption to be present within the developer community uh, was something uh, that was our strategy to you know uh, drive adoption amongst uh, developers thanks neha thanks for sharing that with us so my next question is actually open uh, for all four of you uh, you know i would like to uh, i would like each of you to kind of answer this so what are some of the advantages as well as disadvantages that you have encountered of being a open source or an open core based organization uh tanu do you want to go first yeah sure um so i think advantages are obvious uh, you get a lot of traction from uh an adoption from uh, open source community uh, you have you would be you would be able to build a good community of product enthusiast without uh like without much effort uh so i guess like that actually like you know adds uh adds to uh the like the the effort required uh for you to build such a community if you are a closed source product is much high uh that of being open source reduces that and uh, on on the flip side of it uh it also likes uh, add uh, a much more uh like you know i would say like you know not a disadvantage but like you know it gives you uh much distraction in terms of like you know people might want different things how do you prioritize uh, uh these different uh, requests like you know how do you pri- prioritize your product roadmap how do you product uh, prioritize the requests which are coming in so uh, it's just that like you know it's in the open you need to build a process uh to get a handle on that so i think like you know being open source is always an advantage because people can see the code it helps you in sales because uh, you know people can just test out the uh, open source product and then you know reach out to uh, you uh, if if it is interesting uh, and yeah i mean again like plus a adva- good advantage is that like you know you have a good community of product people uh, like people who love the product so thanks for now uh, harini do you want do have you seen any disadvantages as well uh, of being a you know an open core uh, based organization uh yeah i mean you know there are, as as prana mentioned a lot of advantages but in terms of disadvantage it kind of adds another layer of complexity to a product that you're already building essentially because you know every feature or anything in your roadmap that you're thinking about you need to think about where it fits whether it fits logically in the open source or it has to be in your kind of hosted or like the you know paid version and how do you actually then uh, deploy it to the community in a way that is transparent because you know the advantages of open source is also that you are maintaining a level of transparency uh, for people so uh, essentially you know deploying different features in a more um, reliable and consistent manner across your open source and uh, the closed source kind of a proprietary um, core model that you're building on top of it so uh, that's something that could be a disadvantage uh, for your community thanks thanks harini uh, rishab uh, any other thoughts since you said you are in a little bit of outlier here what are your experiences i mean if you i mean i i, I, I yesterday i was at a discussion with uh, students about you know building businesses around open source and i mean so bu- building a business is hard building a good product is even harder and building a good product and a business and giving it away for free is like you're just uh, you know just adding all the all the difficulties right this is this is the most difficult part in a way right because you are giving away a product for free um, you are uh, you know building you're building something good first right because open source and open core or whatever you want to call it is essentially brutally meritocratic i mean just because you're giving away your stuff for free doesn't mean people are going to use it they want it to be as good as consumer grade software so Uh, so that's the expectation they want it free right and and then it comes with lot of uh, expectations from the community it comes with uh, you know a lot of entitlement uh, you know it's uh, communities are not kind i mean you know if you're giving away something for free doesn't mean that they'll always love you for it right they will expect more they'll expect you to build features uh, even contributors right i mean uh, you know i mean uh, i i see some early stage pro- projects right i mean early stage projects love contributors right but once you hit a point you know you don't want contributors because you realize that contributors uh, are not here for uh, for long right especially people who are just going to contribute one thing and then go away and then leave it to you to maintain their contribution 
So you really want to build a community that's long lasting, you know, that has a long term perspective are going to be around for a long time. Uh, so I think there are a lot of a lot of disadvantages uh, in building this model. The big advantage is obviously that, you know, you get distribution from a business perspective, you get marketing and distribution for free. Uh, but yeah, it's, 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 it's a very hard business to be very honest. Thanks, Rishabh. Neha, do you have anything else to add uh, to what all the other three panelists said? Yeah, I mean, uh, majorly I agree with the advantages that there is unlimited potential in terms of getting feedback from the community since there is mutual transparency. Uh, you know, you can talk about and mutually brainstorm with uh, upcoming future uh, bugs, fixes, you know, community likes and dislikes and the community support. Uh, it only gets trickier or confusing, uh, you know, as a disadvantage. Uh, sometimes you get an overwhelming input from the community on various topics. For example, uh, this recently happened that uh, we wanted to add product telemetry to the uh, open source uh, Kiploy platform. And 90% uh, of the users were okay with it. But there are, you know, 5 to 10% which are very highly vocal. Uh, when they are against something or they do not like something. And this kind of situations create a confusion with the direction sometimes. Uh, and it is not just uh, with a, you know, a, a simple feature. It can get to and even to the technical architecture and different things. So, yeah, that's something that where it gets trickier. Thanks, Neha. So you and Rishabh uh, both brought out uh, aspects of community in this whole uh, process, right? So my next question, and again, I'm from GitHub, so uh, our focus is all around developers. So I really want to know what has been uh, experience for each of you uh, to target this developer audience via open source using your platform. So um, again, Neha, maybe we'll just start with you and go around the clock. Sure. I mean, uh, we generally, you know, uh, talk to developers and SDTs in the Go community, uh, the channels, since Kiploy currently supported Go. Uh, we talk to developers on GitHub around, uh, you know, th those discussions, uh, what could be added more or not. And uh, even when we changed our Kiploy logo, <laughs> uh, we took leverage of uh, GitHub community and the, uh, you know, sources that we have. Uh, and it really helps us with coming up different uh, aspects of seeing a feature or our user experience and uh, uh, taking into actions. So uh, that way, you know, it is really helping us uh, to target developers and take feedback from them and, you know, reiterate the loop. Thanks, Neha. Uh, Pranav, what has been your experience? Yeah, I think the reason why we uh, started open source and like, you know, targeted developers was that uh, during our, um, like the place where I worked last, uh, like, you know, we had uh, this internal tool, which we used for uh, customer support and all the customer data. Uh, like it, it's generally like, you know, not the actual business. Uh, it's actually like, you know, kind of an internal tool. Most people don't like it and it's always standard. There might be a little bit, a small element, which you want to tweak, you want to update. Uh, and for that reason, you might be like, you know, building the entire thing from scratch. So we wanted to avoid that. We wanted to give people a base platform where they can build, they can, uh, build their tools like you know uh, to uh, to organize their customer data to organize uh, their support requests and stuff like that uh, so uh, what we have provided is like you know we build a platform where we can uh, like developers can build on their own integrations and their own extensions on top of chatwood and uh, so far we have seen uh, quite a lot of things which we couldn't even imagine if we are doing it as a uh, as a closed source product so i think like you know being uh, being direct to uh, developers and like, you know, getting their attention uh, is really important uh, uh, to us. So, yeah. Thanks. Thanks for now. Uh, Rishabh, anything that uh, you want to add here since you have been uh, doing this for a very long time? And also, uh, you know, if you have seen any change uh, in last few years. Yeah, I mean, uh, so we, we actually learned two large projects. Uh, one is ERP Next, which is 
like a, which is targeted to almost every business out there because it does financial accounting and there we are not mostly the, they're the kind of developers we are dealing with are mostly freelancers uh, you know so so some company wants an ERP next imp- implementation they'll get hold of a freelancer and then you know that freelancer may or may not continue to contribute in the community that and and out of that you know we we've probably able to identify four or five really good long term contributors uh, through the community right uh, and uh, and the other big project we run is uh, frappe framework which is essentially a the the tool that we used to build erp next uh, and and it's it's kind of a low code uh, rapid application development you know that's what it used to be called before the term low code was uh, you know i've i've seen i've lived through both of those cycles so yeah, it's a rapid application development tool low code framework uh, in these days and that is more targeted to developers though we haven't really been out there uh, promoting frappe as much as erp next um and you know our experience is 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 you know i mean it really depends on the quality of software you're you are giving out right i mean uh, you know we our software wasn't that great for many years you know now it's reasonably uh, reasonably good or i would say it's acceptable uh, so so you know the the kind of software you put out is you know the kind of developers you attract so it's it's very brutally meritocratic out there um, so yeah i mean that's thanks thanks rishabh harini uh, do you want to add anything to this last question yeah i mean so if you're building like a product that's for targeted non developers audience like marketing or operations then open source is possibly like you no know, some not something they're mainly looking for they're looking for something that solves their problem and they don't care if the product is open source or not whereas like if you're focusing on building a developer tools product which is what we are doing with a dev tool um and i can speak for myself or like how other developers feel uh, if there's a completely closed source option and there is a open source option i tend to gravitate towards the open source because uh, you know if you hit some feature limit or something like that you can continue to extend at a core and contribute back and uh, so with roi we are building like a no code platform that basically allows you to get started like a no code but then you can continue to extend at a code level anytime you need and our experience with you know seeing how developers are extending it in different scenarios has been really interesting uh, various kind of use cases and uh, that's has been a really good learning experience for us thanks thanks so much harini so i think uh, we are on time and this is brings us to the close of uh, today's panel discussion uh thanks a lot neha pranav harini and rishab for uh, you know sharing your journey your experiences of building your organizations i think uh, this is a growing trend today so your experiences will help lot of uh, you know new startups and organizations who are going in the same direction as each of you did so with that uh, thanks a lot once again and uh, i would hope to talk to you all of soon